Ohm's law states that the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. Introducing the constant of proportionality, the resistance, one arrives at the usual mathematical equation that describes this relationship I equals V R display style I equals frac V R where I is the current through the conductor in units of amperes, V is the voltage measured across the conductor in units of volts, and R is the resistance of the conductor in units of ohms. More specifically, Ohm's law states that the R in this relation is constant, independent of the current. Ohm's law is an empirical relation which accurately describes the conductivity of the vast majority of electrically conductive materials over many orders of magnitude of current. However some materials do not obey Ohm's law, these are called non-ohmic. The law was named after the German physicist Georg Ohm, who, in a treatise published in 1827, described measurements of applied voltage and current through simple electrical circuits containing various lengths of wire. Ohm explained his experimental results by a slightly more complex equation than the modern form above see history. In physics, the term Ohm's law is also used to refer to various generalizations of the law, for example the vector form of the law used in electromagnetics and material science J equals Sigma E display style math BF J equals Sigma math BF e where J is the current density at a given location in a resistive material e is the electric field at that location and Sigma Sigma is a material dependent parameter called the conductivity this reformulation of Ohm's law is due to Gustav Kirchhoff topic history In January 1781, before Georg Ohm's work, Henry Cavendish experimented with Leyden jars and glass tubes of varying diameter and length filled with salt solution. He measured the current by noting how strong a shock he felt as he completed the circuit with his body. Cavendish wrote that the «velocity» current varied directly as the «degree of electrification» voltage. He did not communicate his results to other scientists at the time, and his results were unknown until Maxwell published them in 1879. Francis Ronalds delineated intensity, voltage, and quantity current for the dry pile, a high voltage source, in 1814 using a gold leaf electrometer. He found for a dry pile that the relationship between the two parameters was not proportional under certain meteorological conditions. Ohm did his work on resistance in the years 1825 and 1826, and published his results in 1827 as the book Die Galvanische Kette, Mathematische Berbiete, the galvanic circuit investigated mathematically. He drew considerable inspiration from Fourier's work on heat conduction in the theoretical explanation of his work. For experiments, he initially used voltaic piles, but later used a thermocouple as this provided a more stable voltage source in terms of internal resistance and constant voltage. He used a galvanometer to measure current, and knew that the voltage between the thermocouple terminals was proportional to the junction temperature. He then added test wires of varying length, diameter, and material to complete the circuit. He found that his data could be modeled through the equation x equals a b plus L display style X equals frac a B plus L where X was the reading from the galvanometer L was the length of the test conductor a depended on the thermocouple junction temperature and B was a constant of the entire setup from this Ohm determined his law of proportionality and published his results in modern notation we would write I equals e R plus R Display style I equals frac math call E R plus R where E display style math call E is the open circuit EMF of the thermocouple R display style R is the internal resistance of the thermocouple and R display style R is the resistance of the test wire. In terms of the length of the wire, this becomes I equals E R plus R L display style I equals frac math call E R plus math call R L where R display style math call R is the resistance of the test wire per unit length. Thus, Ohm's coefficients are A equals E R B equals R R 
Display style equals frac mathcal e mathcal r quad b equals frac mathcal r mathcal r. Ohm's law was probably the most important of the early quantitative descriptions of the physics of electricity. We consider it almost obvious today. When Ohm first published his work, this was not the case. Critics reacted to his treatment of the subject with hostility. They called his work a web of naked fancies, and the German Minister of Education proclaimed that a professor who preached such heresies was unworthy to teach science. The prevailing scientific philosophy in Germany at the time asserted that experiments need not be performed to develop an understanding of nature because nature is so well ordered, and that scientific truths may be deduced through reasoning alone. Also, Ohm's brother Martin, a mathematician, was battling the German educational system. These factors hindered the acceptance of Ohm's work, and his work did not become widely accepted until the 1840s. However, Ohm received recognition for his contributions to science well before he died. In the 1850s, Ohm's law was known as such and was widely considered proved, and alternatives, such as Barlow's law, were discredited, in terms of real applications to telegraph system design, as discussed by Samuel F. B. Morse in 1855. The electron was discovered in 1897 by J. J. Thomson, and it was quickly realized that it is the particle charge carrier that carries electric currents in electric circuits. In 1900 the first classical model of electrical conduction, the Drude model, was proposed by Paul Drude, which finally gave a scientific explanation for Ohm's law. In this model, a solid conductor consists of a stationary lattice of atoms ions, with conduction electrons moving randomly in it. A voltage across a conductor causes an electric field, which accelerates the electrons in the direction of the electric field, causing a drift of electrons which is the electric current. However the electrons collide with and scatter off of the atoms, which randomizes their motion, thus converting the kinetic energy added to the electron by the field to heat thermal energy. Using statistical distributions, it can be shown that the average drift velocity of the electrons, and thus the current, is proportional to the electric field, and thus the voltage, over a wide range of voltages. The development of quantum mechanics in the 1920s modified this picture somewhat, but in modern theories the average drift velocity of electrons can still be shown to be proportional to the electric field, thus deriving Ohm's law. In 1927 Arnold Sommerfeld applied the quantum Fermi-Dirac distribution of electron energies to the Drude model, resulting in the free electron model. A year later, Felix Bloch showed that electrons move in waves, block waves through a solid crystal lattice, so scattering off the lattice atoms as postulated in the Drude model is not a major process, the electrons scatter off impurity atoms and defects in the material. The final successor, the modern quantum band theory of solids, showed that the electrons in a solid cannot take on any energy as assumed in the Drude model but are restricted to energy bands, with gaps between them of energies that electrons are forbidden to have. The size of the band gap is a characteristic of a particular substance which has a great deal to do with its electrical resistivity, explaining why some substances are electrical conductors, some semiconductors, and some insulators. While the old term for electrical conductance, the MHO, the inverse of the resistance unit ohm, is still used, a new name, the Siemens, was adopted in 1971, honoring Ernst Werner von Siemens. The Siemens is preferred in formal papers. In the 1920s, it was discovered that the current through a practical resistor actually has statistical fluctuations, which depend on temperature, even when voltage and resistance are exactly constant. This fluctuation, now known as johnson nyquist noise, is due to the discrete nature of charge. This thermal effect implies that measurements of current and voltage that are taken over sufficiently short periods of time will yield ratios of V, I that fluctuate from the value of R implied by the time average or ensemble average of the measured current. Ohm's law remains correct for the average current, in the case of ordinary resistive materials. Ohm's work long preceded Maxwell's equations and any understanding of frequency dependent effects in AC circuits. Modern developments in electromagnetic theory and circuit theory do not contradict Ohm's law when they are evaluated within the appropriate limits. Topic: <laughs> Scope. Ohm's law is an empirical law, a generalization from many experiments that have shown that current is approximately proportional to electric field for most materials. It is less fundamental than Maxwell's equations and is not always obeyed. Any given material will break down under a strong enough electric field, and some materials of interest in electrical engineering are non-ohmic. Under weak fields, Ohm's law has been observed on a wide range of length scales. In the early 20th century, it was thought that Ohm's law would fail at the atomic scale, but experiments have not borne out this expectation. As of 2012, researchers have demonstrated that Ohm's law works for silicon wires as small as four atoms wide and one atom high.
Topic: Microscopic origins. The dependence of the current density on the applied electric field is essentially quantum mechanical in nature. See classical and quantum conductivity. A qualitative description leading to Ohm's law can be based upon classical mechanics using the Drude model developed by Paul Drude in 1900. The Drude model treats electrons or other charge carriers like pinballs bouncing among the ions that make up the structure of the material. Electrons will be accelerated in the opposite direction to the electric field by the average electric field at their location. With each collision, though, the electron is deflected in a random direction with a velocity that is much larger than the velocity gained by the electric field. The net result is that electrons take a zigzag path due to the collisions, but generally drift in a direction opposing the electric field. The drift velocity then determines the electric current density and its relationship to E and is independent of the collisions. Drude calculated the average drift velocity from P equals minus e e tau where p is the average momentum, minus e is the charge of the electron and tau is the average time between the collisions. Since both the momentum and the current density are proportional to the drift velocity, the current density becomes proportional to the applied electric field, this leads to Ohm's law. Hydraulic <laughs> analogy <laughs> 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 A hydraulic analogy is sometimes used to describe Ohm's law. Water pressure, measured by pascals or psi, is the analog of voltage because establishing a water pressure difference between two points along a horizontal pipe causes water to flow. Water flow rate, as in liters per second, is the analog of current, as in coulombs per second. Finally, flow restrictors, such as apertures placed in pipes between points where the water pressure is measured, are the analog of resistors. We say that the rate of water flow through an aperture restrictor is proportional to the difference in water pressure across the restrictor. Similarly, the rate of flow of electrical charge, that is, the electric current, through an electrical resistor is proportional to the difference in voltage measured across the resistor. Flow and pressure variables can be calculated in fluid flow network with the use of the hydraulic ohm analogy. The method can be applied to both steady and transient flow situations. In the linear laminar flow region, Poiseuille's law describes the hydraulic resistance of a pipe, but in the turbulent flow region the pressure flow relations become nonlinear. The hydraulic analogy to Ohm's law has been used, for example, to approximate blood flow through the circulatory system. <laughs> <laughs> Circuit analysis In circuit analysis, three equivalent expressions of Ohm's law are used interchangeably. I equals V R or V equals I R or R equals V I. Display style I equals frac V R quad text or quad V equals I R quad text or quad R equals frac V I. Each equation is quoted by some sources as the defining relationship of Ohm's law. Or all three are quoted, or derived from a proportional form, or even just the two that do not correspond to Ohm's original statement may sometimes be given. The interchangeability of the equation may be represented by a triangle, where V voltage is placed on the top section, the I current is placed to the left section, and the R resistance is placed to the right. The line that divides the left and right sections indicates multiplication, and the divider between the top and bottom sections indicates division, hence the division bar. Topic: <laughs> Resistive circuits. Resistors are circuit elements that impede the passage of electric charge in agreement with Ohm's law, and are designed to have a specific resistance value R. In a schematic diagram, the resistor is shown as a zigzag symbol. An element resistor or conductor that behaves according to Ohm's law over some operating range is referred to as an ohmic device or an ohmic resistor because Ohm's law and a single value for the resistance suffice to describe the behavior of the device over that range. Ohm's law holds for circuits containing only resistive elements no capacitances or inductances for all forms of driving voltage or current, regardless of whether the driving voltage or current is constant DC or time varying such as AC. At any instant of time Ohm's law is valid for such circuits. Resistors which are in series or in parallel may be grouped together into a single equivalent resistance in order to apply Ohm's law in analyzing the circuit. Topic. Reactive circuits with time-varying signals 
When reactive elements such as capacitors, inductors, or transmission lines are involved in a circuit to which AC or time varying voltage or current is applied, the relationship between voltage and current becomes the solution to a differential equation. So Ohm's law, as defined above, does not directly apply since that form contains only resistances having value R, not complex impedances which may contain capacitance C or inductance L. Equations for time invariant AC circuits take the same form as Ohm's law. However, the variables are generalized to complex numbers and the current and voltage waveforms are complex exponentials. In this approach, a voltage or current waveform takes the form A E S T display style air caret street where T is time, S is a complex parameter and A is a complex scalar. In any linear time invariant system, all of the currents and voltages can be expressed with the same S parameter as the input to the system, allowing the time varying complex exponential term to be cancelled out and the system described algebraically in terms of the complex scalars in the current and voltage waveforms. The complex generalization of resistance is impedance, usually denoted Z. It can be shown that for an inductor, Z equals S L display style Z equals S L and for a capacitor z equals 1 s c display style z equals frac 1 sc we can now write v equals i z display style bold symbol v equals bold symbol i c dot bold symbol z where v and i are the complex scalars in the voltage and current respectively and z is the complex impedance this form of Ohm's law, with Z taking the place of R, generalizes the simpler form. When Z is complex, only the real part is responsible for dissipating heat. In the general AC circuit, Z varies strongly with the frequency parameter S, and so also will the relationship between voltage and current. For the common case of a steady sinusoid, the S parameter is taken to be J omega display style J omega corresponding to a complex sinusoid a e j omega t display style air caret m box j omega t the real parts of such complex current and voltage waveforms describe the actual sinusoidal currents and voltages in a circuit which can be in different phases due to the different complex scalars topic Linear approximations Ohm's law is one of the basic equations used in the analysis of electrical circuits. It applies to both metal conductors and circuit components resistors specifically made for this behavior. Both are ubiquitous in electrical engineering. Materials and components that obey Ohm's law are described as ohmic, which means they produce the same value for resistance R equals v, I, regardless of the value of V or I which is applied and whether the applied voltage or current is DC direct current of either positive or negative polarity or AC alternating current. In a true ohmic device, the same value of resistance will be calculated from R equals V, I regardless of the value of the applied voltage V that is, the ratio of V, I is constant, and when current is plotted as a function of voltage the curve is linear a straight line. If voltage is forced to some value V, then that voltage V divided by measured current I will equal R or if the current is forced to some value I, then the measured voltage V divided by that current I is also R. Since the plot of I versus V is a straight line, then it is also true that for any set of two different voltages V1 and V2 applied across a given device of resistance R, producing currents I1 equals V1, R and I2 equals V2, R, that the ratio V1 minus V2, I1 minus I2 is also a constant equal to R. The operator delta, delta is used to represent a difference in a quantity, so we can write delta V equals V1 minus V2 and delta I. <laughs> I1 minus I2 Summarizing, for any truly ohmic device having resistance R, V, I Delta V, delta I equals R for any applied voltage or current or for the difference between any set of applied voltages or currents. There are, however, components of electrical circuits which do not obey Ohm's law, that is, their relationship between current and voltage their IV curve is nonlinear or non-ohmic. An example is the PN junction diode curve at right. 
As seen in the figure, the current does not increase linearly with applied voltage for a diode. One can determine a value of current I for a given value of applied voltage v from the curve, but not from Ohm's law, since the value of resistance is not constant as a function of applied voltage. Further, the current only increases significantly if the applied voltage is positive, not negative. The ratio V, I for some point along the nonlinear curve is sometimes called the static, or caudal, or DC, resistance, but as seen in the figure the value of total V over total I varies depending on the particular point along the nonlinear curve which is chosen. This means the DC resistance. V, I at some point on the curve is not the same as what would be determined by applying an AC signal having peak amplitude delta V volts or delta I amps centered at that same point along the curve and measuring delta V, delta I. However, in some diode applications, the AC signal applied to the device is small and it is possible to analyze the circuit in terms of the dynamic, small signal, or incremental resistance, defined as the 1 over the slope of the VI curve at the average value DC operating point of the voltage that is, 1 over the derivative of current with respect to voltage. For sufficiently small signals, the dynamic resistance allows the Ohm's law small signal resistance to be calculated as approximately 1 over the slope of a line drawn tangentially to the VI curve at the DC operating point. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Temperature effects. Ohm's law has sometimes been stated as for a conductor in a given state, the electromotive force is proportional to the current produced. That is, that the resistance, the ratio of the applied electromotive force or voltage to the current, does not vary with the current strength. The qualifier, in a given state, is usually interpreted as meaning, at a constant temperature, since the resistivity of materials is usually temperature dependent. Because the conduction of current is related to joule heating of the conducting body, according to Joule's first law, the temperature of a conducting body may change when it carries a current. The dependence of resistance on temperature therefore makes resistance depend upon the current in a typical experimental setup, making the law in this form difficult to directly verify. Maxwell and others worked out several methods to test the law experimentally in 1876, controlling for heating effects. Topic: <laughs> Relation to heat conductions. Ohm's principle predicts the flow of electrical charge i.e. current in electrical conductors when subjected to the influence of voltage differences. Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier's principle predicts the flow of heat in heat conductors when subjected to the influence of temperature differences. The same equation describes both phenomena, the equation's variables taking on different meanings in the two cases. Specifically, solving a heat conduction Fourier problem with temperature, the driving force, and flux of heat, the rate of flow of the driven quantity i.e. heat energy variables also solves an analogous electrical conduction ohm problem having electric potential the driving force and electric current the rate of flow of the driven quantity i.e. charge variables the basis of fourier's work was his clear conception and definition of thermal conductivity he assumed that all else being the same the flux of heat is strictly proportional to the gradient of temperature Although undoubtedly true for small temperature gradients, strictly proportional behavior will be lost when real materials e.g. ones having a thermal conductivity that is a function of temperature are subjected to large temperature gradients. A similar assumption is made in the statement of Ohm's law, other things being alike, the strength of the current at each point is proportional to the gradient of electric potential. The accuracy of the assumption that flow is proportional to the gradient is more readily tested, using modern measurement methods, for the electrical case than for the heat case. Other versions Ohm's law, in the form above, is an extremely useful equation in the field of electrical, electronic engineering because it describes how voltage, current and resistance are interrelated on a «macroscopic» level, that is, commonly, as circuit elements in an electrical circuit. Physicists who study the electrical properties of matter at the microscopic level use a closely related and more general vector equation, sometimes also referred to as Ohm's law, having variables that are closely related to the V, I, and R scalar variables of Ohm's law, but which are each functions of position within the conductor. Physicists often use this continuum form of Ohm's law E equals rho J display style math BF E equals rho math BF J where E is the electric field vector with units of volts per meter analogous to V of Ohm's law which has units of volts. J 
is the current density vector with units of amperes per unit area analogous to I of Ohm's law which has units of amperes, and ρ Greek, ρ is the resistivity with units of ohm meters analogous to R of Ohm's law which has units of ohms. The above equation is sometimes written as J equals sigma display style sigma e where sigma Greek sigma is the conductivity which is the reciprocal of rho. The voltage between two points is defined as delta v equals minus e d l display style delta 5 equals int math bf e c dot d math bf l with d l display style d math bf l the element of path along the integration of electric field vector e if the applied e field is uniform and oriented along the length of the conductor as shown in the figure then defining the voltage v in the usual convention of being opposite in direction to the field see figure and with the understanding that the voltage v is measured differentially across the length of the conductor allowing us to drop the delta symbol the above vector equation reduces to the scalar equation v equals e l or e equals v L display style v equals e l text or e equals frac v l. Since the e field is uniform in the direction of wire length for a conductor having uniformly consistent resistivity rho, the current density j will also be uniform in any cross-sectional area and oriented in the direction of wire length. So we may write j equals i a display style j equals frac i a. Substituting the above two results for E and J respectively into the continuum form shown at the beginning of this section, V L equals I A rho or V equals I rho L A. Display style frac v l equals frac i a rho q quad text or q quad v equals i rho frac l a. The electrical resistance of a uniform conductor is given in terms of resistivity by r equals rho l a. Display style r equals rho frac l a. Where L is the length of the conductor in SI units of meters, A is the cross-sectional area for a round wire at equals pi R2 if R is radius in units of meters squared, and rho is the resistivity in units of ohm meters. After substitution of R from the above equation into the equation preceding it, the continuum form of Ohm's law for a uniform field and uniform current density oriented along the length of the conductor reduces to the more familiar form V equals I R Display style V equals I R. A perfect crystal lattice, with low enough thermal motion and no deviations from periodic structure, would have no resistivity, but a real metal has crystallographic defects, impurities, multiple isotopes, and thermal motion of the atoms. Electrons scatter from all of these, resulting in resistance to their flow. The more complex generalized forms of Ohm's law are important to condensed matter physics, which studies the properties of matter and, in particular, its electronic structure. In broad terms, they fall under the topic of constitutive equations and the theory of transport coefficients. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Magnetic effects. If an external B field is present and the conductor is not at rest but moving at velocity v, then an extra term must be added to account for the current induced by the Lorentz force on the charge carriers. J equals sigma E plus V times B display style math BF J equals Sigma math BF e plus math BF V times math BF B in the rest frame of the moving conductor this term drops out because V topic zero there is no contradiction because the electric field in the rest frame differs from the e field in the lab frame e E plus V times B. Electric and magnetic fields are relative, see Lorentz transformation. 
If the current J is alternating because the applied voltage or E field varies in time, then reactance must be added to resistance to account for self-inductance, see electrical impedance. The reactance may be strong if the frequency is high or the conductor is coiled. Topic: <inaudible> Conductive fluids. In a conductive fluid such as a plasma, there is a similar effect. Consider a fluid moving with the velocity v display style math bf v in a magnetic field b display style math bf b the relative motion induces an electric field e display style math bf e which exerts electric force on the charged particles giving rise to an electric current j display style math bf j the equation of motion for the electron gas with a number density n e display style n underscore e is written as m e n e d v e d t equals minus n e e e plus n e M E new V I minus V E minus E N E V E times B Display style m underscore e n underscore e d math bf v underscore e over dt equals n underscore e e math bf e plus n underscore e m underscore e new v underscore i v underscore e n underscore e math bf v underscore e times math bf b, where e display style e m e display style m underscore e and v E display style math bf v underscore e are the charge, mass, and velocity of the electrons, respectively. Also, new display style new is the frequency of collisions of the electrons with ions which have a velocity field v i display style math bf v underscore i. Since, the electron has a very small mass compared with that of ions, we can ignore the left-hand side of the above equation to write sigma e plus v times b equals j display style sigma math bf e plus math bf v times math bf b equals math bf j where we have used the definition of the current density, and also put Sigma equals N E E two new M E display style sigma equals N underscore E E carrot two over new M underscore E, which is the electrical conductivity. This equation can also be equivalently written as E plus V times B equals rho j display style math bf e plus math bf v times math bf b equals rho math bf j where rho equals sigma minus 1 display style rho equals sigma caret minus 1 is the electrical resistivity it is also common to write eta Display style eta instead of rho display style rho, which can be confusing since it is the same notation used for the magnetic diffusivity defined as eta equals one mu zero sigma display style eta equals one mu underscore zero sigma. Topic. See also Fick's law of diffusion Hopkinson's law Ohm's law for magnetics
Maximum power transfer theorem Norton's theorem Sheet resistance Superposition theorem Thermal noise Thevenin's theorem <laughs>